Hello and welcome again to Mrigvats Learning. I am Sanjay Sharma, your learning facilitator in the series of videos posted to this channel. In the last video of the A Date with Programming series, you learned about conditional operator. It is not always that you make decisions to select one value over the other. Many a times, you make decision to run a set of instructions based on a condition. In this video, you will learn about the if construct in pseudocode, the if else construct in pseudocode, the nested if construct in pseudocode, and solution to a program using relational, logical, and conditional operators. Decision making is one of the integral parts of your day to day life. Consciously or subconsciously, you keep making decisions based on the prevailing conditions. If the condition is favorable, you perform a specific task, otherwise, either you don't perform the task or perform an alternate task. For example, you decide to drive only when you need to travel to a distant location. However, if the destination is close enough, you might want to walk down to the destination. In most of the programming languages, to make a decision, you can use the if construct. If you recall the decision element of the flowchart, it maps to the if construct in a program. The if construct helps you to make decision depending on a condition. Across programming languages, the if construct is built of these components. Condition, which is used along with the if keyword. In the condition component, you use an expression to check if the condition is true or false, generally by using a relational operator or a Boolean expression. In some of the programming languages, such as C++, Perl, and Java, you use the condition in parentheses. Similarly, in Unix shell scripts, you enclose the Boolean expression within square brackets. However, in some of the programming languages, such as Python, SQL, and DOS batch files, you do not need any parentheses to enclose the Boolean expression. After the condition, the if construct has a body that contains various statements that should be run if the condition is true. For example, when you visit a shopping mall, you check if you are interested in a movie. If yes, you go to the multiplex and purchase a ticket. Then, you enter the cinema hall screening the movie and enjoy the movie. As soon as the movie is over, you exit the cinema hall. Finally, you exit the shopping mall. To translate this into a programming language, you can use the if construct as displayed. If movie interest equals equals yes, go to the multiplex, purchase a ticket, enter the cinema hall screening the movie, enjoy the movie, exit the cinema hall, exit the shopping mall. The body of the if construct is enclosed within delimiters. Different programming languages have their own conventions to use delimiters for the body of the if construct. For example, in some of the programming languages such as C++, Java and Perl, you use curly braces as delimiters for the body. In case of DOS batch files, you use parentheses as delimiters. In Unix shell scripts, you use a combination of then and phi as delimiters. In programming languages such as basic, you use and if as delimiter. However, in some of the programming languages such as Python, you do not use any delimiters. In many programming languages such as C++ and Java, if you use a single statement in the body, you can choose not to use delimiters. However, it's a good practice to use delimiters for the body of the if construct even for a single statement to avoid any confusion. In pseudocodes, we will use begin if and end if as delimiters for the body of the if construct. For example, to compare two integers and display if the second number is larger than the first number, write the program on the scripting area. Program compare begin program integer first num second num first num is equal to 49 second num is equal to 77 if second num is greater than first num begin if display the second number is greater than the first number end if display program ends here end program let us now summon our virtual memory board and evaluate the program with a dry run as soon as you run the compare program, the computer reserves a memory block for the program which is enclosed between the begin program and end program statements. 
With the integer statement, the program declares and creates two variables, first num and second num of integer type at random locations within the memory block allocated for the program. When the next statement is run, 49 is assigned to the first num variable. When the next statement is run, 77 is assigned to the second num variable. As soon as the if statement is run, it compares the value of the first num and second num variables. If the expression evaluates to true, the program allocates a section of a memory to the body of the if construct within the memory reserved for the program and the control moves to the body of the if statement. When the display statement is run, the program writes the the second number is greater than the first number text in the memory allocated for the if construct. The display statement, which is run within the memory allocated for the if construct, takes the text as an input and displays it on the virtual display board. The memory associated with the display statement is then released for the other statements of the if construct. As soon as the end if statement is run, the memory allocated for the if construct is released for the other statements of the program. However, if the expression of the if condition evaluates to false, the program skips the body of the if construct and control directly moves to the display statement immediately after the if construct. As soon as the display statement is run, which is run, irrespective of the if construct being run, the program writes the program ends here text in the memory allocated for the program. The display statement takes the text as an input and displays it on the virtual display board. As soon as the end program statement is run, the entire memory associated to the program is released for the other activities of the computer. It is not just that you visit a shopping mall only to enjoy a movie. If you are not interested in a movie, then you might want to meet your friends and complete your shopping errands. You can update the earlier if construct by adding the statements, otherwise, meet friends, complete shopping errands. As you might have noticed in the decision element of a flowchart, every decision has two aspects, yes and no. Therefore, depending on the evaluation of the condition, you complete one of the set of activities of the flowchart. Similarly, in an if construct, you can use else statement in the construct. The group of statements you use under the else statement are run only if the condition evaluates to false. This means that if the condition evaluates to true, the block of statements immediately after the if statement is run. However, if the condition evaluates to false, the block of statements following the else statement is run. Irrespective of the condition evaluating to true or false, the statements following the if construct are run as soon as the if construct is completed. For example, to compare two integers and display the larger number, write the program on the scripting area. Program compare to begin program integer first num second num first num is equal to 49 second num is equal to 77 if first num is greater than second num begin if display the first number is greater than the second number end if else begin else display the second number is greater than the first number end else display program ends here end program let us now summon our virtual memory board and evaluate the program with a dry run as soon as you run the compare to program the computer reserves a memory block for the program which is enclosed between the begin program and end program statements with the integer statement the program declares and creates two variables first num and second num of integer type at random locations within the memory block allocated for the program. When the next statement is run, 49 is assigned to the first num variable. When the next statement is run, 77 is assigned to the second num variable. As soon as the if statement is run, it compares the values of the first num and second num variables. If the expression evaluates to true, the program allocates a section of memory to the body of the if construct within the memory reserved for the program and the control moves to the body of the if statement as discussed in the earlier program. However, if the condition evaluates to false, as in this case, the program allocates a section of memory to the body of the else statement within the memory reserved for the program and the control moves to the body of the else statement. When the display statement is run, the program writes the second number is greater than the first number text in the memory allocated for the if construct. 
the display statement which is run within the memory allocated for the if construct takes the text as an input and displays it on the virtual display board the memory associated with the display statement is then released for the other statements of the if construct as soon as the end else statement is run the memory allocated for the if construct is released for the other statements of the program as soon as the display statement is run which is run irrespective of the if construct being run the program writes the program ends here text in the memory allocated for the program the display statement takes the text as an input and displays it on the virtual display board as soon as the end program statement is run the entire memory associated to the program is released for the other activities of the computer if you need to check multiple conditions before running a set of statements you can use logical operators in the if statement in such a condition the if statement evaluates to true only if the entire expression of the if statement evaluates to true and false otherwise additionally if you need to evaluate a condition after another condition then you can use an if construct either in the if statement body or the else statement body when using nested if construct make sure that you use appropriate delimiters for the body of each if and else statement to avoid any confusion in some of the programming languages such as java and python you can also use else if statement while in unix shell script you can use the else statement to use an if statement immediately after the else statement even though it appears to be a very simple construct that you use to check conditions yet it's a very powerful tool that you can use to make sure that your program is a full proof one right from small validations such as checking appropriate values that a user enters to verifying complex values such as allowing access to the user are validated by using the if construct this construct is extensively used to make programs secure from unauthorized users such as hackers in the last video i had requested you to create a program to display if the management of kamna hill resort has offered any discount on room tariffs to the guest i hope you have created the program that achieves the result here's the solution to the problem that you can use to compare your program write the program as shown in the scripting area program kamna discount begin program integer room type tariff discount display enter the room type 1 or 2 accept room type display enter the tariff rupees accept tariff discount is equal to room type equal to equal to 1 and tariff less than 5000 question mark 5000 minus tariff colon room type equal to equal to 2 and tariff less than 4000 question mark 4000 minus tariff colon 0 display the customer is offered a discount of rupees display discount end program let us now summon our virtual memory board and evaluate the program with a dry run as soon as you run the kamna discount program the computer reserves a memory block for the program which is enclosed between the begin program and end program statements with the integer statement the program declares and creates three variables room type tariff and discount of integer type at random locations within the memory block allocated for the program we will use these memory chunks to store values of the room type tariff charged from the guest and value of discount offered to the guest notice that we are using discount variable to store a result of a calculation this is because of the complication of the expression being used to calculate the value as soon as the display statement is done program writes the enter the room type 1 or 2 text in the memory which the display statement takes as an input and displays on the virtual display board when the accept statement is done it waits for the user to input the number as soon as the user enters a value for example 1 the accept statement takes it as an input and stores the value in the room type variable existing in the memory block reserved for the program With the next display statement the program writes the enter the tariff rupees text in the memory which the display statement takes as an input and displays it on the virtual display board when the accept statement is run it waits for the user to input the second number as soon as the user enters a value for example 4250 the accept statement takes it as an input and stores the value in the tariff variable 
When the next statement is run, the conditional operator compares the values of the room type and tariff variables with a set of predefined values. In this case, the value of the room type variable is 1 and the value of the tariff variable is 4250 which is less than 5000. Therefore, both the expressions evaluate to true. As a result, the AND operator also evaluates to true. Now that the condition evaluates to true, the expression on the left hand side of the colon operator is evaluated which is 750 in this case and assigned to the discount variable. With the next display statement, the program writes the the customer is offered a discount of rupees text in the memory which the display statement takes as an input and displays it on the virtual display board. When the next display statement is run, it takes the value of the discount variable as an input and displays it on the virtual display board. In case the user had entered 2 as a value for the room type variable and 3500 as a value for the tariff variable, the expression in the condition would have evaluated to false because the first expression of the AND operator evaluates to false. Therefore, the control moves to the right hand side of the colon operator. Here, the condition of the nested conditional operator is evaluated. Here the room type is 2 and tariff is 3500 which evaluates both the expressions of the AND operator as true. This in turn makes the AND operator to be evaluated as true. Therefore, the expression on the left hand side of the colon operator is evaluated which is 500 in this case and assigned to the discount variable. Additionally, if user enters 5000 as the value of tariff and room type as 1, the condition would have evaluated to false. Similarly, if user enters 4000 as the value for tariff in case of room type as 2, the condition here would also evaluate to false. In both the cases, the condition 1 as well as condition 2 would have evaluated to false. This makes the control to move to the right hand side of the second colon operator and 0 is assigned to the discount variable. These values are displayed accordingly on the virtual display board. As soon as the end program statement is done, the entire memory associated to the program is released for the other activities of the computer. Now let's complete an exercise on using the if construct in a pseudocode program. In this video, we created a program to display discount offered to the guest by the Kamla Hill Resort Management. In the program, we used conditional operator to solve the problem statement. Now use the if construct to solve the same problem statement. Here's the problem statement for your reference. At Kamna Hill Resort, the management wants to check if any discount is offered on the room tariffs. Create a program that irrespective of the room type, premium cottage 1 or deluxe room 2 displays the amount of discount offered to the guest. Try creating this program at your own. I will post the solution to this problem statement at the end of the next video. You can compare your program with the one available in that video. In this video, you learned about using the if construct in pseudocodes, using the if else construct in pseudocodes, using the nested if construct in pseudocodes, and solve the program using relational, logical, and conditional operators. In the next video, you learn about using the case construct in pseudocode. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it especially for you. If so, do not forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel Let's Simplify Computers with Mrigvats Learning. Clicking notification, the bell icon will notify you about my new videos.